Hi, um, welcome to this video. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the drag legends, the queer icons, the sisters of perpetual indulgence. Um, I chose this project because I really wanted to cast a spotlight on some um, more underground um, drag artists, members of the trans community, and I thought like this would be a really cool way to showcase them. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing my makeup while I talk about them. Um, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence have a very, very signature makeup look, um, which I will get into in a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing my makeup while talking about them. I'm very excited. So <laughs> let's get going. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> I've never used this... Um, white face paint before. Um, I got it for Christmas and I have not had the chance to use it yet. So we're just gonna try it. I mean like how bad can it be? Um, yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> mm. I feel like I'm putting on sunscreen. Who are the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence? The Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are a group of queer and transgender nuns who use humor, satire, drag, and street performance, and religious imagery all tied into one big hand basket to call attention to issues of sexual intolerance as well as um, gender, sexuality, and morality issues. They are also a charity and they raise money for so many different kinds of causes stemming from um, AIDS research um, and support of AIDS victims, LGBT related causes, mainstream um, community building resources. Um, they also uh, go to classrooms and teach and provide resources for safe sex, um, as well as educating others about the harmful effects of drug and drug, drugs and addiction. Um, they also raise, have raised over $1 million for various charities in the past, and the San Francisco branch alone, which is the founding branch as well as the biggest branch today, raises about um, $400,000 a year, which is a massive amount of money. Um, they also sponsor dances for LGBTQ youth, um, have organized um, campaigns to stop violence in the various areas where they are stationed, advocate for the legality of medical marijuana, and just so many more amazing, wonderful causes, and they've helped so many people um, through what they've done. I'm also like not using a mirror for this right now. I'm just looking at like my camera viewfinder. So as long as it like looks good on the camera, like that's all that I really care about, honestly. Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence are composed of um, all different kinds of people of all different sexualities and genders, although like the most, um, the majority of them are gay men. Um, and one thing that I found was super interesting about them is when they do their makeup, which as you can probably guess is like a bright white face, um, combined with very colorful, um, almost like carnival style makeup. Um, they tend not to hide their uh, masculine features, nor do they hide their facial hair, which I really appreciate a lot. And it also stands out very much um, in the modern drag community today and back then, because the goal for drag, um, especially back when they were founded in the 80s is realism. So um, I usually cover my eyebrows whenever I do big makeup looks like this um, or when I get into drag. But in the spirit of the fissures, I will be leaving them uncovered. And I would also not be covering my facial hair if I had any. But unfortunately, I have like two chin hairs and that's it. Um, This is definitely white enough. So where do the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence actually come from? So they were founded in, all the way back in 1979 in the Castro neighborhood of San Francisco. Um, this, mm, this neighborhood used to be um, a home for many Irish Catholic families and workers, but over time, that's where the queer community of San Francisco really started to migrate. Um, it was a huge hotspot for the queer community, um, and it even had enough of a population and enough influence and political clout to actually elect Harvey Milk. So the sisters were influenced by two groups. One of them was called the Coquettes, um, and the other one was called the Angels of Light. Oh, and a note about the Coquettes. So John Waters, like Pink Flamingo John Waters, like the legendary director and RuPaul's Drag Race guest star John Waters, 
um, he actually called the Coquettes hippie acid freak drag queens. Um, but both of these groups utilized high camp, outrageous scenes and sets, fantastic costumes, bad puns, and deliberately bad drag um, and deliberately bad acting in their performances. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, this is very different from other drag performers at the time who largely um, was going for a very realistic effect with their drag. The, um, the Coquettes, the Angels of Light, and later on the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence were on the very opposite end of the extreme. So the first ever actual appearance of any of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence was the Easter weekend of 1979. So, a group of um, 14 men got some, whoa, some nun costumes from a convent in Iowa, um, and they said that they were putting on a performance of The Sound of Music, but little did those nuns at the monastery know, or the nunnery, did they know they actually put on some makeup. And one of the men was quoted as saying they put on just enough makeup to not be dowdy on a Friday night. And then they went to a softball game, they went to a nude beach, and they went to the annual cash. Sorry, I just dropped some water. And then to the, um, the Castro Street Fair. They also um, came across a group of um, religious people like trying to um, talk to queer people to try to like, you know, pray the gay aware or whatever. And they managed to actually chase them off um, that night. And it was like pretty impressive. So their first ever event happened in October of 1980. Um, it was a bingo game and salsa dance. And it was very, very well attended by the community. And after that, they regularly, re regularly um, attended events and also um, held events of their own as a way to showcase drag and to raise money for different charities. So as far as the actual like structure of the organization and the members go, um, I, I think I mentioned this before, people of all genders and all um, sexual orientations are welcome to join. Um, the, the majority whoa, is gay men. Um, the process of becoming a sister um, of perpetual indulgence is very similar to the um, the process of becoming the actual nun, which is um, but it is considered very much a lifelong commitment. Like you are in this for real. Um, once you put on that habit, you're a sister of perpetual indulgence. The Sisterhood of Perpetual Indulgence is a worldwide organization. Um, so they have branches everywhere from New York City to San Francisco to France to Spain to Uruguay to Australia to Switzerland. Sorry, I did a little bit more off camera because I like, couldn't focus with it on camera. So even though the majority of people like haven't heard of them at all, um, this organization is still um, far from underground. Um, Susan Stryker, we know Susan Stryker. Um, she has called them the epitome of gender fuck um, because, like I mentioned before, they don't hide their masculine features. Um, members of the organizations themselves do not call themselves drag queens. They consider the nun image and the dragness to be very separate from drag queens, even though they both utilize many of the same motifs, um, like that heavy extravagant makeup, the camp, stuff like that. So many religious organizations actually don't really like that the sisters use um, Catholic and Christian imagery in their... I look so stupid right now. Oh, and if you think that um, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence actually are um, religious or follow religious doctrine of any kind they really don't um every member is free to have their own beliefs um the current um head mistress of the organization um is a devotee of bowieism the worship of david bowie mm -hmm. another thing that the sisters of perpetual indulgence do um is canonize saints and angels into their organization um, these saints are almost always important queer figures, um, community leaders, organizers, other things like that. So some of their saints include, or their most popular saints include, um, Rosie O'Donnell, 
um, Margaret Cho, Kathy Griffin, and Harvey Milk. And they have a ton of different angels. Um, they give that title to anyone who basically like helps them out. Oh, Ethel Merman is another saint. So, I don't have a nun habit, but I do have a hoodie with strings on it. And these eyelashes are not sticking. Oh my god. I think it's because the paints that I use were oil based. Um, and even though I said it like a couple times, um, they're just not sticking. So sorry if they look absolutely wonky. Um, but yeah, I'm really not too mad about how this turned out. I haven't done my makeup in like months and months and months um, just because I've been so busy with school. So my skills are definitely a little bit rusty. But um, the whole purpose of um, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence is to be a little bit messy. It's to be imperfect. It's to um, just have fun with yourself, not take yourself too seriously. And it's also about spreading good vibes, spreading positive messages, doing good within the community. And I think that's why that I was attracted to the concept of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence so much. I think that's why um, I'm so interested in them. Um, I loved learning about them so much. They seem so fun. Um, looking at the pictures of them online, um, I actually think that I met one at one point um, where I'm from in Pittsburgh um, because I remember going there. Um, my mom was dropping me off with some friends and someone in very white, very bright makeup came up to my mom and I and I had this um, trans pride themed makeup. It was my first pride out as a trans man, um, which is also why I use the trans flag colors on my face today. Um, and they talked to me, my mom and I for a little bit, um, and it was just a very, like, heartwarming experience, and it, it was something that I remember very vividly, um, for sure, and when I looked it up, I discovered this, like, whole new world that I, like, wasn't aware of, and as, um, a huge fan of drag myself, as someone who does drag on occasion, um, I definitely enjoyed learning about this a lot. I don't know if I can do any like kind of conclusion or anything like that, but I hope that you enjoyed. That is the Sisterhood of Perpetual Indulgence. I'm Parker, um, and I hope that you enjoyed. And I'm gonna go wash all this off now and hope that it doesn't stain my skin for the rest of the day or whatever like that. So yeah, thank you. I'll see you later.